Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a little bit of synth sound design and this idea was first sparked by Jason Schopfer over at Rocky Mountain Sounds. As far as I'm aware, he's the first person to actually have used this feature with Omnisphere. Here's what we're creating today, a four-way keyboard splits where layer A handles the bass register, layer B will take the low mids and layer C covers the high mids and layer D owns the top end and each layer can have a completely different sound source and they'll crossfade smoothly or split sort of like hard on a note depending on how we set this up. Of course you could take three different samples of the same instruments um, sampled at different octaves and map these across the keyboard. I'm just using four different sound sources so you can actually hear how the crossfade works and we're all going to do it on one layer. We're not going to use the live mode or the uh, split mode within Omnisphere. We're just going to use one part within Omnisphere. And this is exactly the same technique used in high-end Omnisphere expansion packs. And once you understand how this works, you're never going to buy a pre-made patch, you know, split patch ever again, because you're just going to build your own. Quick favour though, before we do dive in, is smash that like button. It just takes one second, but it helps the logarithm massively and tells YouTube to show this to more producers who need it. Really do appreciate what you do for this channel, how you support this channel. So let's get into it. Okay then, just a quick crash course before we start on how all this works. And I promise no boring lecture here. Omnisphere lets you stack up to four synthesis layers in a single patch, you know, layer A, layer B, layer C, layer D. And each layer can have its own sound source, as we already know, and its own effects, its own everything. Normally, all four layers sound at once across the whole keyboard. But there's a little modulation source called bias, and this is where this comes in. Because bias is a modulation source that applies a linear boost or decrease based on where you play. You set a bias point, basically you sort of a fence line on your keyboard, and bias controls how much a parameter responds to the left or right of that point. When we root bias to control each layer's volume, we can literally tell layer A only play below this note, layer D, only play above that note. It's like having four independent instruments that know their place. So I hope that makes sense and let's build it. So first things first, we need a clean slate and four distinct sound sources to work with. So let's follow along as we initialize patch. So we just go to utility here, click on initialize patch and we get the lovely source square bright. What I'm gonna do is quickly nip into sample, Going to empty and I'm just going to stick it on all Spectrasonics and we just want a bass sound. So I'm just going to type in here bass. I'm not exactly bothered what bass sound we use. That's as long as it's a synth bass sound. That'll do nicely. We go on to layer B, sample, empty, and we want a mid range. Of, let's go for a mallet. Let's see if a mallet's in there, some kind of mallet sound. What I want to do actually is mute layer B. No, we want a that's a phrase. We want a mallet. That'll do nicely. We can then go to layer C, because I'm gonna do the little drop down up here. And we're gonna go a bright bell tone. So we go bell. And let's go for a Want a... So that's all right, that's a nice bell tone. Let's go for a bit louder. That's nice. And then layer D, I want to stick some paddy type sound in there. So if I just put a uh, pad. That'll do nicely. So we've got four completely different sound sources. And I've put them all on. Play all up and down the keyboard the same sound. So you can use whatever you want. That's just the beauty of this. Just make sure they're different enough and you'll hear the transitions clearly. You know, obviously this is going to work on a multi-sample instrument. So there we go. Uh, so all we need to do now is start with these building blocks because this is where the bias enters the chat 
this is the part where everything's going to start clicking into place and yes it's going to feel a bit repetitive for about 60 seconds but do trust me this is where the magic starts to happen because we need to tell each layer to listen to a bias source for its volume and the parameter we're targeting is this lovely amp slider here i think of it as like the volume control that modulation can talk to so layer a we're going to right click on here it just goes off the screen slightly but there is a setting saying modulate with bias and you just click on that one and we're on, that was layer c so i just need to undo that because we need to start on layer a so we don't confuse everything so we just unmodulate and try again go onto there modulate modulate with bias that's one two three and four so there we go that's the four bias settings done now if you play your keyboard well you're gonna hear not an awful lot because nothing useful because all four layers are still fighting for space that's because we haven't told bias where those fence lines are because of that's what's next because we want layer a to basically play the bass register only so also like like below c2 so i'm just going to turn these off so so that's what we've got at the moment so what we need to do is set this bias point to well we want it to be c3 on our keyboard so that's that note here and we are going to set this direction to left we're going to turn the source all the way up turn the amplitude down so that means as we approach c3 we start to lose the sound so that's how we're starting to go into cross fade between these layers here we we'll move on to the layer d top end because these are the easy bits to sort out so layer d and we're on bias there do exactly the same this time we want everything direction to the right and we are going to go top end so i want everything above c is that c5 yep so as we move away from that note it goes quieter that's exactly what we need so hopefully this is starting to make a little bit more sense because this is the trick pro sound designers use because now we're going to go to layer b and we are going to say right i want the bias setting to the right and what was my last note here sorry c3 so i want to say c3 as well let's help if i turn that right Just turn this up now. So we get no sound when we get to C3, which is exactly what we need. So what we need to do now is set the upper end and we need to turn on another bias source because this is a trick. This is how we get it working. So we've got to modulate. We go bias and this time i want this to be inverted and what was the top note there c5 so i want to stop around about let's go for a what's a4 Notice how I put four times on because I want it to be a hard stop around about that note. Crossfade about there. Now, what we need to do now is do exactly the same for layer C. And uh, layer C, I want to say, where did I stop there? A4. So I change this to A4. Everything to the right. Turn the source up. Target down. Mm 
Now, where did I choose D? I asked for it about C5. So if I choose this note here, I need to go modulate with bias. Do four times split again. Whack that full invert. So that means nothing above that note will play. And I need to go left, don't I? No, I need to go right. I am right. I need to go to the right. I think I've got my note wrong because I'm on D sharp four, aren't I? That's why. I need to change. I was thinking, why is it not making any sound? Um, stop note A5. So that coincides with C5 there, so that's good. So I'm just going to turn that up as well so you can hear it. In fact, I'll just turn that around up a bit as well. So, with all four layers, we now get this wonderful little split sound. We start with the bass on the left. Move to a mallet. Move to a synth. Move to another synth sound. So we've got four distinct tones split across the whole keyboard. And we can do this, well, we've done this on less than 10 minutes. And it's a custom, like, multi-sample instrument in a way across the keyboard. So there's nothing to stop you as like sampling a piano or something. So bottom octave, mid octaves, and the top octave, and then spread it across the whole keyboard. Because if you want gradual transitions, in, like I said, instead of abrupt changes, then it's this four times button here that you, you need. And this is just the slope of the bias curve. And turn it on, it'll get a smoother, more overlapping crossfade between the layers. So play with this. It's quite a subtle effect, but quite powerful. Here's a creative tip, you can use bias to modulate filter cutoff, effect sends, even pitch. Want your sound to get bright as you play higher? You can route bias to the filter cutoff with the sort of directions, set it to the right and off we go. Want the top octave to have more reverb, then you can route bias to an auxiliary send and the possibilities are endless. And we will explore these in future videos if you, know, if you really found this useful. I'm more than happy to explore this even further, just stick it in the comments below and I will try and answer as many questions as I possibly can. So here's my challenge for you. This technique, just take it, build one custom split patch this, this particular week. Experiment with different sound sources, synths, acoustic samples, weird textures, whatever you can get all of. Screenshot your patch, tag me on Instagram, um, and I'll feature the best ones in next week's video. You'll found, find my handle in the description below you can even tag me in youtube it's wherever you can find me just tag me and we'll feature some of these in uh, uh in, in a future video that i'll do when i come back to looking at bias and show you these other techniques that we can do so in the meantime stay creative stay sonic and i will catch you in the next one